Worth the Trip features a wide variety of out-of-school activities and offers practical advice on how to organise and get the best out of school trips. Coming up, Steve Lord and his pupils from Pool School and Community College visit Goon Hilly Satellite Earth Station in Cornwall. And Claire Corris and her class from the Leyland St Mary's Catholic Technology College are on a math trip to Camelot. Steve Lord and his pupils from Pool School and Community College are visiting the largest satellite earth station in the world. Goon Hilly, based in Cornwall, has over 60 dishes on site and is able to transmit to every corner of the globe. The pupils are taking the trip as part of their investigations into science. In a couple of days, we're going to take a group of Year 7 students to Goon Hilly Earth Satellite Station. It's the centre of a huge communications network and they're responsible for um, many of the, the telephone calls, the, the television programmes um, and intercontinental links um, in the whole world. Well, Goon Hilly Satellite Station is the oldest and largest Earth station in the world. What we're actually doing here, we're a working site and we're actually transmitting telephone, data and TV broadcasts all over the world with our satellite dishes. Communications is an ever-increasing part of the world and understanding how simple things work like telephones, it's, it's, it's that link section that's important. I think that they can possibly fill this gap better than I could in the lab. We offer a wide range of um, key activities that go in with the curriculum. Um, for secondary schools, we cover four areas, um, literacy, um, art and design, um, ICT we do a lot on, and also history, um, a world case study after 1900. Within the local area, because we're based in Cornwall, the Cornish and Devon schools come free into the site, and we have a special bonus for Cornish schools in the fact that we have a bus and we can actually go and pick them up free as well. The plan is um, that we're going on a, a bus tour uh, with a guide um, who will explain exactly you know, what's going on, a little bit of the history of the place. What we're going to do now is pull the site in a bit more detail and before we make our way back over onto the Vincent Centre site. Magoon Hilly is situated within a site of special scientific interest and it's a nature reserve that's managed by English Nature. Coming up on your right hand side now we have Merlin, the most powerful and advanced antenna on site. Merlin can carry up to 15,000 telephone calls at any one time. Quite a few on the right hand side now. The grain tower at the back of the antenna is a lift shaft, and she's the only antenna on site that has a lift fitted to her. We saw a film between two parts of the bus trip um, and it showed us um, what happens in a television centre um, how they link with outside crews and they took us specifically to one in a, a, an area of war abroad um, and showed us how signals come from there, how they, they get uh, sent out to space and um, to a satellite, brought back down to Earth and then end up in our homes. Hello, sir. Hey, what happened? Sorry, They have some free time, they're going into the visitor centre, some interactive stuff that they can work on. Um, I think they can do things with Morse code and they can make 3D images and they can send messages out to space and a whole variety of things. So what are they supposed to be doing? What are they supposed to represent? Uh, they're supposed to represent satellites going around the Earth. And the closer they get to the Earth, the faster they go. It's a video conferencing unit. <laughs> Hello! I'm going to go that side now, let me see what they're doing. Okay. Sending a message to outer space. Hello, yes, sir. 
Okay. So what have you got? Hello, I'd like to know what it's like in space, and do you have to go to school? <laughs> Is it beaming up onto satellite and then beaming down to like, 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 so you got the idea there's a link between this and that one, but it could be a lot further apart, couldn't it? Well, I found some of the questions are really good. They're actually quite difficult to answer some of them because you know, I, you know, I don't know how all this stuff works myself. I have an idea of some of it, but you know, you know I'm not an expert. Um, so in many cases, it's a question of well, you know, remember that question. We'll try and find out when we get back to school. So in terms of you know work later, there are an awful lot of questions to be answered. I think without a doubt they prefer the interactive stuff. They prefer to actually get in and do it. And they've, they've loved the, the three-dimensional images and that type of thing. Well, in the classroom, you can only see, like, pictures and videos and stuff. What it's like when you come here, it's completely different. It's a lot better to learn up here. And it's more interesting as well, sitting in a classroom. Like, you can't really fit um, a big satellite dish in the classroom, so it's more interesting to sort of go and see one. Learning about um, all the things that go on in the world that when you're at home, you don't really know about. And, it's a whole network and new stuff to explore and everything. It's been great watching the kids enjoy themselves. Um, it's a different sort of relationship you form when it's, when it's like this. And uh, when we're back in the lab, um, we'll have lots to talk about. There are many science trips available around the country. The Deep in Hull is an environmental and educational charity dedicated to understanding and protecting the world's oceans. Secondary science activities offer insights into the diet and habitat of the animals in our planet's unique underwater environment. The Museum of Science and Industry in Manchester tells the story of the world's first industrial city. The museum's learning centre provides activities and resources which include guided tours, science shows and the Science Club Network which produces customised events such as themed workshops and debate days. Think Tank is Birmingham's Museum of Science and Discovery. This centre encourages pupils to explore and interact with the exhibits. Think Tank has 10 galleries and runs workshops, science shows, science debates and activity trails. At Inspire in Norwich, students have an opportunity for discovery-based learning. As well as offering over 40 hands-on exhibits, Inspire has linked with local research institutes to provide the Science Squad, a programme of shows using live experiments. There are a range of galleries, activities and resources on offer at the Science Museum in London. Dynamic lecture theatre shows are available throughout the school year. The museum has collections and records of scientific, technological and medical change since the 18th century. Claire Corris from Leyland St Mary's Catholic Technology College is taking her group of Year 7 pupils on a maths trail to Camelot Theme Park in Lancashire. We chose to go to Camelot because uh, we took a group two years ago from the Year 6 feeder schools. We enjoyed it thoroughly, so we thought we'll take the Year 7s again and uh, see how we get on. The trip will cover Pythagoras theorem, about right angle triangles, and the more complicated questions involving that include isosceles, circles, areas, circumferences, areas of sectors, also using practical calculator problems, estimation, surface area and volume. The pupils have done quite a lot of preparation work for the trip, so on the day they're not asking questions, they're more kind of focused on doing the work rather than gathering it for the first time. At the first activity, the children learn about shapes and symmetry. At the moment, we're from the Castle Camelot discussing rotational symmetry, line symmetry, see what shapes they can see, identify the shapes, such trapeziums, rectangles, triangles. If you split into two shapes, what do you see? A rectangle and a semicircle. A rectangle? So what shapes have we got there? What shapes can you see? Yeah, I see, like, a shield. Yeah, shield. A shield. Has that got any lines of symmetry? Yeah, it's got one. Straight down the no. middle. Straight down the middle. So no. if you put a, li you put a line... No, because the... Line. Um, oh, yeah. Line. It's a diagonal line. What are the properties of an isosceles triangle? Two angles the same. Two angles the same, or what about the sides? Um, two sides the same. Yeah. And how do we show that on a diagram? Um, it has two, it has a line on each. It has a line on each. So that's what says make a sketch. Right, what we're going to do now, we're just going to do these measurements. You're going to do the front of the building by pacing. 30, 40, we're trying to estimate the length and the width of the building to find the kind of surface area, the floor. 
For activity two, the pupils visit the log flume to study volume. Over the winter, the waterproof lining has been ripped. Because of the amount, we need to cover the interior of the pond. Work out the volume in centimetres cubed and then convert it. How many flies coming down will it take until the water rises so it kind of overflows the top? 12 and a half litres. If you can fit one litre into your measurings you've got home, do you think if I filled them up 12 times I could fill that pond? Really? Right, so I think we've done something a little bit wrong here. Is there times in the depth by the wind how to calculate that? Right, well look at, look at the sides. You've got that side along there, this side along here, this side along here but you can't see it, and that side along there, and the base. Okay, and then length times depth times two. So that would be fine then, if you're doing that. Activity three uses the kingdom in the clouds to look at shape and speed. So look at the shape. Look at the 12 spines. Think about what shape it makes if you've joined all the spines together. Those kind of things. Right, yes, team. Is that, yeah, is that base has perpendicular height? Correct. Divide by two, don't forget. You okay, girls? Right, how are you getting on with this? At activity four, the pupils use the jousting arena to work on approximation. Right, you have to work out the approximate seating capacity to the nearest 10 people. I, I have an estimate. About one and a half thousand. <laughs> Off the top of his head, one and a half thousand. Overall, I think the trip has been a great success because basically it's got so much maths and it's got so much application about what they can possibly do. Yeah, yeah. perpendicular height multiplied by the base over two. It's all to help with the memory recall as well. Here are some examples of other maths trips available across the country. The American Adventure in Nottingham offers free familiarisation trips. The many rides and attractions in the park bring maths to life. The park also provides packs, making it possible to bring the adventure back to the classroom. The Wheeled and Downler Museum in Chichester, West Sussex, provides practical sessions using the museum's historic buildings and exhibits to explore mathematical concepts. The collections offer exercises in number, algebra, shape and space, measures and data handling. The United Kingdom Mathematics Trust, based in Leeds, is a registered charity which advances the education of young people in mathematics. The UKMT organises national competitions around the country and other enrichment activities for 11 to 18 year olds. The Millennium Mathematics Project runs free lectures held in Cambridge for primary and secondary schools. Lectures cover a huge range of topics, from paper folding, the maths behind David Beckham's number 23 shirt, to modelling climate change and predicting avalanches. Vindelanda and the Roman Army Museum in Northumberland welcome school groups and provides an excellent educational experience for all age ranges. Self-guided maths tours are available, with opportunities to use the barrack rooms, excavation site and Hadrian's Wall for numeracy challenges. For more ideas on school visits, catch up with us next time on Worth the Trip. Can you go? Can go this way as well? I don't even know where it is. I think you throw it that way. Should be able to see it, I hope.